Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my video and today we'll be doing the part one build video of the Skyline Innovations Raptor 210 build. Let me just quick go over all the components that will be in this video. So obviously for the frame we have the Raptor. I'll have the link down below. Um, I did an individual frame review on this so it'll be linked below. For the motors, I'll be trying out the Hyperlite V4 from Pyroflip RC, the 2206-2522 Team Edition motors. These should be really awesome. And I have custom printed uh, TPU motor mounts. Um, they act as a soft mount and a motor protector. I designed those and printed them. For the ESCs, I'll be using the X Racer Quadrant 4 in 1. Whoops. Um, configured in the 4 in 1, you can see I've already soldered them together. So that'll be new to try there. As well as another new thing, I'll be using the uh, Furious FPV Radiance. So this is a pretty cool flight controller. It can take full voltage because using these two together, I won't need a PDB, which would be nice for the 20 millimeter um, standoffs that this comes with for the slammed configuration. Um, yeah, pretty cool flight controller. It's the MPU 6000 Gyro. Just got an XSR receiver. I've got the FX795T video transmitter configured. Uh, I cut the little wire so it's in 200 milliwatts mode and a Fox ear antenna, but I do have a TBS uh, Triumph stub antenna on the way. And I might use a full length um, TBS Triumph. And so those are the electronics and I'll also be using an HS1177 with GoPro 2.5 millimeter lens, but I don't have that here currently, it's on the way. And I've got some a bunch of blue wire and different gauges for the signals and powers and everything. I got that from FPV HQ, uh, some matching black, as well as some blue wire mesh or a sheath. So this will be a really cool all blue build. And I have DAL Cyclone V2s on the way, the transparent blue ones for these. I think with these um, standoffs, the wires, the this, everything with the motors, everything is going to be all blue and it's going to look really cool hopefully. So let's get into mounting the motors and connecting them up to the ESCs. Alright, so here we are. We have the frame, the motors, the um, protectors that I made. You know, these are optional. Um, I'll leave a link down below. I'll make a Thingiverse page. If they're not already up, they will be soon of these. So you can download them and print them yourself or have somebody else print them if you don't have a printer. And because I'm using these, these have a 1.5 millimeter um, section here. They, they slot over the arms like this. And then this part here is 1.5 millimeter stick to act as a soft mount for the motor because I will be soft mounting my motors and flight control in this build to get maximum smoothosity. Smoothosity. <laughs> According to all, everyone on the internet. So the stock screws that come with these motors and most motors aren't going to fit. So I needed some 8 millimeter screws which are the ones I'm using here. So basically I'm just going to stick this guy on. Make sure it lines up. And then I'm going to be mounting these with three screws here. Stick one through, and then get your motor on. First one's definitely always the hardest. Just kind of get with my hand there, and then don't do it fully tight yet. Just get it in enough, and then do the other two. Since I'm using three, you don't want to soft mount with only two screws. Okay, now that I have the uh, two screws in there just loosely by themselves to keep the motor from moving, you can line up the holes with the other ones as well as the middle shaft there. Last screw since I'm soft mounting, and even when I don't soft mount, I always use Loctite, but especially if you're soft mounting where you're not fully torquing it down, you need to use Loctite. This is just some blue Hobby King stuff that I got a long time ago. Make sure you get the blue, or else you'll never get your screws out. Okay, there's that one. I didn't tighten it fully down yet. I'm going to remove the other ones. Okay, those are all in. Make sure it's lined up once again and then just tighten them down. I'm not going to use too much pressure because this is uh, obviously soft mounting it. So I still want it to not totally squish on there. So just make sure it's solid. Yep. And there we go, that's our first motor complete, so I'm going to do the exact same for the other three here with these protectors, and wow, that, that looks really sharp right there, so yeah, let's do the other three. 
All right, so there we go with all four motors now mounted on these little things. Once again, with the three screws and the Loctite, make sure you use the blue Loctite. Now, since these motors are all clockwise threaded, um, they do not have different um, nuts for that. The uh, front right, normally if you have motors that are clockwise and counterclockwise threaded, this will be the clockwise threaded motor, and this will be the counterclockwise, and then they match up diagonally. So these two are counterclockwise, which is usually a black prop nut, and these two are clockwise threaded, which is usually like a silver or red prop nut there. All right, so next, since I'm using the Quadrant uh, 25 amp ESC, and I have it installed as a four in one, you can see I soldered all the pads together, these uh, main ones on the side, as well as I did the back. They just go all together like that. Um, this one, and it just has the 30.5 millimeter mounting holes there. It'll just fit right onto here. And it looks like these motor wires are actually going to be pretty much the perfect length to come right into here like that. However, I'm going to add some wire sheath to around this, some blue. Okay, so you've got the heat shrink and the wire sheathing and scissors, the wire mesh. So this stuff, um, you can see I already have the end. You can um, hit it with a lighter real quick to try and melt the end so it doesn't unravel as much. I do that every time I cut a new piece. So I'm just going to run all the wires straight. Let me zoom in actually. And I'll turn this a little bit. So I'm going to run all the wires straight and I'm going to reverse the motor direction accordingly in the BL Heli configurator. So really the trick with these guys is to just get them in like that and then pinch and like expand it like this and then just kind of let it slide down and keep doing that so you get till to the end. It gets harder as you get down there. Okay, there we go. I got that all the way down to the end there. And the end of the wires are right here. So I'm actually going to slide it up. Where's the wires? Right here. So I'm going to slide it up just a little bit back off of them. Now it's actually, now it's not wanting to because it's tightening on them. So there, I slid it up just a little bit. And now I'm going to cut this. Actually, I'm going to slide it up a little bit more because we need some room for the wires to come out. there you can see right there's our wires poking through and then we can slide it back down and now we have our wires coming out when they go to the PDB and then we can or not the PDB the form on ESC and they can just go like that but I need to uh, hit these a lighter quick so it stops fraying okay just kind of pinch them together and this will melt them back just a little bit so you kind of just have to be mindful of your lengths and you'll learn as you do it more and more of how much it will melt back. So that's actually good because that gives a little bit more room for the wires to... There we go. Okay, and now for this end down here, I'm actually going to take a piece of, what is it? One quarter inch heat shrink tubing some heat shrink and I'm just gonna cut a little guy here okay there we go it took a little bit of squishing but it got on there slide it back up because you want to keep it away slide it all the way down against the motor there like that get it just a little bit farther Okay, and now I'll heat shrink it with my hot air gun. Okay, air gun going, and be careful not to uh, hit the um, the sleeving too much because you can obviously melt that. So just try and keep the airflow low, and just over the heat shrink here. Get underneath it too. There we go. Looks pretty clean. Should have slid it up just a little bit close to the motor, but I can still do that. So that looks really nice right there, all that blue. So now I'm going to do the same for the other three motors, and then we will attach the 
uh, four in one ESC here, and we'll start attaching these up to there. Okay, there we go. All the wire mesh and heat shrink down here is on, and I will heat shrink these ends as well. But because of the uh, way that this um, four in one ESC, is, these quadrants are longer than a normal sized four in one, they kind of stick out a little bit here. So I might have to cut these back a little to allow for more movement. So I haven't heat shrink them yet because I'm not fully sure on the length I'm going to need. But next to get the um, ESC mounted, basically the frame comes with a hardware pack. And you're going to use these little nylon um, screws here. I use, this is the way I'm going to do it. And then they go through the bottom here. And then you take these little standoffs as well that they include. And just screw that onto there. Don't over tighten these, they're only plastic into plastic, so you can very easily strip them. Okay, last one here, and obviously, depending on what electronics you're using, you'll need different heights, so use the uh, different parts accordingly. So, this should fit right here and just go right on. Actually it does not, so when that happens, when it does not fit, just loosen up these standoffs just a, like a half turn. Just loosen them up like that. So they are not fully bolted there, freer to move. And then it fits right on. Okay, so the form on ESC is on. So this is the front up here, so this will be motor one. It doesn't really matter right now because they just wire up to their respective corners of the board. Okay, so like I said earlier, I was questionable at the length. Um, it looks like I don't really want to smush it like that. I kind of, I mean, you're going to have to a little bit to get it to curve. Maybe zip tie this so it stays straight on the arm. I like the way that looks. But I'm going to actually cut the wires and the... Um, the blue at the same time to make it a little bit shorter. Don't want to do that much though. Alright, just tin it. These three wires a little hard since they're in this thing a little too close here. But um, we still get to them there and then I'll in the pads here. Make sure you don't hit the nylon standoff, that would not be good. Melt that. Okay, there we go. Now let's see if I can pull this back a little bit. Actually, before I do that, let's just make sure if these are going to be an okay length, yeah. So I'm gonna need some more heat shrink for this end to make it look pretty. Okay, so put that on before you solder to the ESC. There we go, and just slide that down out of the way. And now we should be able to get these guys to go on. And I'm not exactly sure about the order, but it's not gonna matter anyways because I'm just gonna reverse them. and line these up. Okay, so here we are back. You can see I was able to get this one in here once again. I had to trim the blue back just a little bit with these little cutters, and I couldn't quite get it all with the heat shrink, but I think that'll be good enough like that, and that'll still allow a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to finish up the other three, and we'll come back after that. All right, there we go. I have all four of these finished up. You can see with the sleeving. Once again, because this uh, 4 one ESC is longer, I didn't like how it had to go together like that, but that's really the only way to do it, and I think that I did my best there, and I think it looks still looks pretty good. The wires aren't as straight as I'd like. They kind of bend in, but you know, you can't really help that, and I still think it looks really nice. So yeah, that was the end of the video. Please subscribe if you want already, and I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon if you wish to help support the channel, because these videos do take quite a bit of work to produce. Stay tuned for part two of this build, which will finish up the physical build, and then part three, we will do the computer software setup, and then we'll get outside and fly at line of sight, and then this will definitely be my main uh, my main FPV freestyle quad so yeah stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video